Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to a video that's probably going to be a bit longer than usual and a preamble that is also going to be a bit longer than usual. It's the review of this, the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 600, the brand new Mark III version of their kind of classic, their mainstay, big selling Trident dive watch. Now, full disclosure from the beginning of the video, this watch was sent to me for free by Christopher Ward. I don't have to send it back. I don't want to send it back. This is a keeper. I think it is pretty fantastic. Now, you may think that I'm only saying that because I was given a free watch. I can't really help you with that. It's up to you whether you take my opinion at face value or you think it has been paid for today. All I would say is that there are a number of other reviews of this watch. Christopher Ward had a big push a couple of months ago. You should be able to find reviews by Bruce Williams, by The Time Teller, by Adrian from Bark and Jack, and Mark from Average Bros. I urge you to check out all of their videos in addition to this one. Never just take the opinion of one person when you're buying something as important and expensive as a watch. Now the thumbnail today suggests that this could be the best dive watch under 1000 US dollars. I didn't want to rush this video. I've had this watch in the house and on my wrist for about three to four weeks, getting a good feel of it and having a good think to see if there's anything I think is better than this Christopher Ward Trident Pro for at or less than a grand US and I'm struggling to think of anything that outspecs it, has better build quality than it, or has a better after sales package than is offered by Christopher Ward. I would love to hear from you though. If you don't fancy the CW, leave me a comment, let me know what you would spend a grand on instead. I think this one does offer a compelling package. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna flip the review around a little bit. I'm gonna start with the negatives first, because I don't think there are all that many of them, then I'm gonna get on with the positives. Let's flip the camera and get into it. All right, let's get into the box. Now, very nice box, by the way, uh, half wood and half kind of PU leatherette here. These are just over 900 US dollars to put a bit of perspective on the pricing. So that's a chunk of change under a grand. As I said, I've been struggling to think of something that's better value for money than this CW. Now, this is my first encounter with the brand. I have come pretty close on a couple of previous occasions though. What have we got here? Owner's manual, we know real men don't read the instructions. I looked at picking up a Christopher Ward Trident, a previous generation at the beginning of 2017, but didn't at that time. We have a nice little CW branded polishing cloth in this one. I then tried pretty hard to buy a 38 mm Trident GMT last year from a guy on an Australian watch forum. He was located in Melbourne, I'm in Sydney, that's a thousand kilometers, and he wouldn't post it. I'm like, dude, seriously, I can't just get on a bus, stick the thing in the post, but it didn't happen. So this is my first meeting with Christopher Ward, and there it is. Now, I alluded to this in the introduction of the video, 60-60 guarantee, I think definitely the best guarantee package that you'll find under a grand. Really, you're looking at Omega, Breitling, or Rolex for something that offers better than this. 60-day return, if you're not completely satisfied, they will refund your money. 60 month, that's a five year warranty on the movement. Please let me know in the comments if you know of a brand that offers more at the price. So all the usual review components will be here today. Movement accuracy report, loom video, indoor, outdoor wrist shots, etc. But as I said, I'm gonna start with a couple of negs before I move through the rest of the review because it is gonna be in the main a positive review. If you can get past these negs, if they're not a negative for you, then I highly recommend checking one of these out. It is very, very well-made, solid little watch. So neg number one concerns the bracelet. Now the bracelet itself is all right, you know, fairly uninspiring three link oyster style bracelet. It's fairly well finished and the clasp is a pretty good one. As you can see, I've been wearing this as my main, not only, but my main watch over the last, I think it's four or five weeks now since it arrived in the house. It's got some scuffs, proper milled clasp as you'd expect. 
So my neg is with this, it should actually be on the positives list rather than the negative list, but it's ended up on the negative list. The clasp has this internal micro adjust mechanism, not quite Rolex glide lock, but along those lines, uh, tool free on the fly, you need to take it off, but you can do it certainly when you're out and about over the course of the day. It gives you about a centimeter of change. You pull that little lever down, you can go a couple of notches this way, a couple of notches that way, ensuring that over the course of a day, you always get the right fit. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked that way for me. I found that the size of my wrist, I'm kind of on the outer edge here, or if I add another link, I'm on the inner edge. So it really, all this is doing is working around the fact that they haven't provided half links on the bracelet. Ideally, you wanna start the day somewhere in the middle of there, giving you two notches to make it looser and two notches to make it tighter depending on the weather conditions, etc. All they need to do is add a half link into this system to make that perfect. At the moment though, it's a bit of a workaround because they don't give you half links, you're just working around that fact. So a negative that should be a positive, but could be a positive if they provide half links in the future. Neg two, and this one is gonna be a question of personal taste. It's certainly a bit of an eye catcher. Super shiny ceramic bezel insert and lots of different facets to those indices. I'll pop in some macro later on for you. It's certainly designed to glint and play with the light. Now that is gonna suit some people to a T. Others who prefer that kind of all brush tooly thing might not get on that well with the Trident Pro because it is a little bit more showy. It certainly has a touch of bling about it with that ceramic bezel and some of the other polished surfaces. And neg number three is the elephant in the room. It's the one that I'm sure some of you have been shouting at your phone or your computer since you pressed play on the video. It's the dial layout, it's the logo, it's the font, it's the branding. Do you know what this watch reminds me of? Well, nothing, it reminds me of a Christopher Ward. And even if you're not a fan of what they've done here, you have gotta give them a bit of credit. Now, far from being a micro brand, Christopher Ward have been knocking around for a decade or so now, and they've made far too many watches to qualify for that particular label but they've always done their own thing. They've always tried to do something a bit different and create a genuine brand identity. This is the third version of the Trident. They've been a couple of halfway facelifts as well, very much like what they do in the motoring industry. And in this particular upgrade, there's this Christopher Ward font has moved over to the nine o'clock. They have added in that little logo you can just about see in some lights and it disappears in other lights underneath the 12. Now, a lot of people don't like the font. They don't like wearing another man's name on their wrist. That's something that you're gonna have to get used to if you wanna buy one of these or a number of other brands, to be honest. But I think most people have a problem with the logo kind of dial positioning. It's often referred to as unbalanced. I wouldn't necessarily say it was unbalanced. It's just balanced differently from the majority of watches. You'll find a logo underneath 12 and the date window at three, leaving a big space over there at the nine. Christopher Ward, I've kind of turned that around a bit. They put the logo at the 12, the brand name over at the nine. So the, the space, if you will, really still is up there, that kind of ghost logo at 12. It is something you get used to. Have they got it perfect? I'm not sure that this will be the final incarnation of the Christopher Ward look and logo. I still think that they will refine this with the generations to come. Logos are a tricky thing. I've gone through one, two, three different logos and I've only been in operation as just one more watch for two and a half years. It's something that does take a bit of time to get it right and I still think that Christopher Ward are taking the time refining the product. Some of the little details that mark this out as a Christopher Ward, like the Trident there, counterbalance on the second hand remain, but they've got rid of those distinct kind of early 20th century hands that they had on the, the previous models, which I think is a good thing. I think it's a very clean, sharp looking modern aesthetic, but it's not gonna appeal to everybody. It's gonna turn some people off because of the font they've used and because they've restructured the dial in an unfamiliar way. But if you can get past that, this watch is a cracker. All right, on with the rest of the review. Now, this is the 40 millimeter diameter version. You can get this in a slightly smaller 38 or a slightly larger 42. A couple of different colorways if you go for those sizes. The 40 is only available in this black. It would have been the one that I picked anyway. So 40 mil in diameter, just over 13 mil thick, 47 mil lug tip, two lug tip. 
20 millimeter lug width, bit of taper down to 18, back up to 20 at the clasp, and sized up, as I mentioned, I could do with an extra half link in here to make this one perfect. It weighs in at a not inconsiderable 160 grams. Feels solid, looks solid, and in operation, everything about this watch is rock solid. 316L stainless steel case crown bezel and bracelet. Solid links, we've got screw links, and I showed you that. Interesting, if not quite living up to its full potential clasp there earlier on. Massively shiny ceramic bezel insert, but it is a good one and it is fully loomed. So I may as well pop the loom video up early then. This is Grade X1 GL C1 Superluminova, bit of a mouthful, a brand new type of Superluminova. C1 tends to be paler green, it's a kind of white green colour rather than the darker green of C3, and my is it bright initially. Plenty of it on the hands, the indices, and on that zirconia ceramic bezel insert. It lasts okay, certainly in practical terms, it lasts through the night. The ceramic bezel insert fades quicker than the dial and hands, but I guess that's the right way around. So very nice, effective loom. Dead flat sapphire crystal with plenty of anti-reflective coating on the underside. Little bit of a chamfered edge on that crystal as well. I think fitting nicely into the overall design with that sloping ceramic bezel insert and the bezel. Now, I heard this rumor on the Scottish Watches podcast a couple of weeks ago. Check out this bezel action. Listen to that. Apparently, Christopher Ward went round the dealers recording the noise made by other watches bezels. That could be a totally scurrilous rumor started by Rick and Ricky, which I've now perpetuated, but it certainly has got one of the most fabulous sounding and thoroughly positively engaging bezels that I have come across. I heard of Lexus doing that a few years ago, trying to get their IS to sound like the BMW, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if Christopher Ward had done something like that. 120 cut unidirectional rotating dive time as you would expect. And the case finishing is fantastic. I'll blend in a little bit of macro B-roll as well here. Make sure of brushed and polished surfaces and this lovely kind of scalloped effect. They've kind of scooped out the underside of the case. So only 13 mil thick, 600 meter rated. So that is a seriously solid little case here. And yet it looks much lighter and thinner than it is because they've cut out little sections here and there. They've got that kind of undercut, if you will, around the crown guards. Very, very effective indeed. Now, soft edges, little chamfered edge to the crown itself. Christopher logo, again, nicely detailed in there as well on the crown. Let's zoom in on that light catching dial then. I really do quite like the handset here. Brushed down the middle, but polished on the edges. Similarly, all of those little applied indices are also brushed on the top surface and polished on the edges. Little frame around the date window there at the three o'clock. They've actually balanced it out quite nicely, I think. They've managed to put the same half index at the three and the nine, balancing out along the horizontal plane rather than the vertical plane. Now, the little Christopher Ward logo there, it does rather appear and disappear. Maybe the dial would have looked better balanced if it had been more pronounced but maybe it would have looked more cluttered if it had been pronounced. Automatic there, printed above the six and 600 meters in red, the only little splash of color in this one. Swiss made either side of the index at six and a minute track all the way around the outside. Kind of fairly simple layout. And I do like that Trident counterbalance, balancing out the loom lollipop on the other side of it. Nice handset. You can see an extra edge, that kind of chamfered off edge to the tip of the hour hand that possibly is only noticeable under macro lens. Quick release bracelet, very welcome addition. I think it's only the second one that I've encountered and no, it doesn't dig into your wrist, you don't feel it at all. Means I don't have to pop a link to show you a rather attractive, big, deep etched embossed Trident logo there, Christopher Ward Trident Pro 600. Now, Swiss made, Swiss movement. This one contains a Salita SW200-1. This is a 26 dual cloned variant of the ETA 2824, kind of entry level, workhorse Swiss automatic, 
it hacks, it hand winds, it beats 28,800 times per hour, giving you that nice smooth sweep of the second hand. I've always got along well with these Salitas and this one is no different. This was on my wrist for the first week in June there and as you can see coming in very, very consistently floating around the plus four, plus five seconds per day. That I found has been the Salita strength, not only the accuracy, but the consistency. They're rated between minus 20 and plus 20, but all the ones I've had in my Oris and other watches have usually floated around this kind of plus four to plus eight seconds per day variance, which is pretty good going at the price. Let's get it on wrist then. 40 mil, great size for me. It's my kind of sweet spot. I do go a couple of mil either side, but my preference is for 40 mil. Feels like a chunky little thing. 160 mil is at the top end of the kind of sports watch sweet spot that I keep talking about. Stainless steel watches at 40 mil usually come in somewhere between 140 and 160, but feels nicely balanced. The clasp, even though it's got that uh, micro adjust built in, isn't overly large, for example. I think it's a a good size matching the overall dimensions of the watch. And that's a proper overhead shot today. I've got a new tripod and various bits and pieces to help me out with these reviews this week. So a proper overhead shot there for perspective. I've got a seven inch wrist. I think the 38 and the 42 would both have been more than acceptable for me. 47 mil lug tip to lug tip on this one. So again, it's not a big watch, but it wears very well. A bit of curvature to those lugs. I could have got away with either of the other two sizes, I think, but this is a nice one. And if I take the watch outside into some natural light, you can see even more where it gets its name, the light catcher from. That shiny, shiny ceramic bezel and all of those little polished edges on the indices really do play around with the light very nicely. You can also see that Christopher Ward logo appearing and disappearing at the 12 o'clock. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, whether they shouldn't have bothered at all or whether they should have done something a bit more pronounced. And that's it on wrist. As I said, it's a very chunky feeling watch without either being too big or too small. Got that extra 10 grams, you certainly know it's there, but the short lug to lug means it's very, very wearable if you like a 40. Now, as I said, this is a keeper for me, and as you can see, I've kind of scratched this one up already. I thought on that basis, I would treat myself to the alternate strap. There's a kind of Cordura and rubber strap, which I ordered and paid for, and they sent me the blue one. So this is going back, but I may as well take it out of the packet and attach it to the watch to show you what it should look like if it were black. Well, I can see why fashionistas say never wear blue with black. That looks pretty bloody awful. You can get this strap as an option or you can buy it with the strap originally. I think it's available on leather or this kind of rubber and cordura effort or the bracelet. Personally, I would always go for the bracelet and then you can play around. You can add on straps as you see fit. I do hear these ones are a bit stiff. They don't conform to the wrist and they don't really soften up with time. So do bear that in mind if you're an after a look other than the bracelet. So well specced, well built and well warranted and with a clean modern aesthetic that doesn't try and look like anything else. If not the Christopher Ward, what else are we looking at at a thousand dollars or less? Well, one obvious choice to me anyway is the Aura 65 Diver. This is a bit of a, a hobby horse of mine and this channel as I've gone through three of these things. Quite a different kettle of fish though. It's got the same movement, roughly just over a thousand US, but only a hundred meters water resistance, much lighter, uh, very kind of flimsy feeling by comparison to the Christopher Ward. Some of those gaps around the bracelet lug ends are, well, you can see your fingers through them most days. But the Oris has history in a way that the Christopher Ward does not. The only other watch that I think might give this one a run for its money in terms of build quality is the Raymond Veal Freelancer Diver. I have held one of these, not reviewed one as yet, but that is a solid, solid watch. They are around the thousand US dollars as well, but only available in 42 mil and has that funny date cut out on the dial, which I know is not going to appeal to everyone. So my first encounter then with Christopher Ward, big thank you again to them for sending me this one. As discussed, it's a keeper. I think this one and the Oris 65, perfect foils for each other. Whether I've got a retro vibe or I'm feeling modern on the day, I've got a 40 mil dive watch to suit me now. 
It's going to be hard for you to try one of these on though, I must admit, unless you live in England and you can go to their warehouse, you're going to take a bit of a punt if you're buying one of these online, but I think it's a risk worth taking with this watch. It is very, very impressive technically, beautifully machined, beautifully manufactured, and I think well priced. The logo, well, you can make your own mind up about that one. So there you have it, the Christopher Ward C60 Trident Pro 640mm. I think one of the best dive watches you can buy for less than a thousand US. If there's something I've forgotten, if you can come up with something better, please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Or a 65, very different kettle of fish, and the Raymond Real Freelancer that I mentioned, probably more expensive than the Christopher Ward and a bit bigger. They're the only two that I could think of that would give this one a serious run for its money. I think the quality of the Christopher Ward is fantastic. I've been really, really impressed with this one. And I think it looks good. It's not gonna to be to everyone's tastes. I don't think they've quite finished this one. I think you're gonna see their design language continue to evolve with the generations and the, the years to follow. And that's okay. How many watch brands concretize their look within a decade? None that I know of anyway. But a rock solid, well spec watch with a great after sale package for less than a grand and one which I'm enjoying wearing very much. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.